Log on to VH1.com for exclusive photos and home movies of NSYNC. Plus, check out scrapbooks, video clips, and photo galleries for all driven artists. We needed a bass singer. We were calling everybody we knew, trying to see if anybody knew a kid who was like 16 who could hit a low F. We had already set up a showcase so we could film a demo. And we had two weeks. We auditioned probably 30 bass singers for that last position. Justin had a vocal coach in Memphis. I called up Bob Westbrook and said, I need a bass singer. And he said, well, there's this kid down in Mississippi, and he's really a true bass, and he's 16, and he's a good kid. Lance was born in Laurel, Mississippi. Lance was a wonderful baby. Real happy little boy, he, he really was. When he was just really small, he and his sister would put on little shows for their dad and me. I have known Lance since we were in fifth grade. That's when he moved to Clinton. He was really into country music, Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre, people like that. Reba McIntyre was the first concert he went to. He just came home so excited about it, and I remember him saying that he would love to be able to do that. Lance and I had started taking a voice from Bob Westbrook. He's a voice teacher out of Memphis that would come to Jackson. Lance's voice changed very early. He had a good low, full bass sound uh, when he was young, and he was one of the best basses. He did the Mississippi Showstoppers when he was in the eighth grade. The Showstoppers was basically a group to promote the Mississippi Agriculture Museum. Tourist groups would come through Jackson and they would stop there and the museum would cook them catfish and we would perform. He was known for his low voice but definitely not his dance. <laughs> Lance is a very social person. He loved all the activities and never wanted to stay home. He always wanted to go to school. He was an officer in his class. And then, of course, he was involved in the show choir. Relax and enjoy Attaché 1995. Attaché is the show choir that competes nationally. It's sort of like a Vegas show for high school kids. Show choir was a little more jazz hands, which is your fist like this. It sounds so silly, but it, as a sophomore, to be accepted in Attaché is a really big thing. Lance didn't want to draw attention to himself, but he loved what he was doing and took it very seriously. It was while he was in Attaché in the beginning of the 11th grade that we got the call. Lynn Harless, Justin's mom, called me. She told me that her son was in a group and that they needed a bass singer. Lance came home and I told him that Justin Timberlake's mom had called and he knew who Justin was from the Mickey Mouse Club. Lance said, Justin wants me to sing in a group with him. I thought to myself, no way, we're not going to do this. Her answer was no from the get-go. I said, well, okay, I'm going to call her and do the hard sell. <laughs> Lynn called me probably two or three more times during the evening. It was really, really scary. I mean, he was 16 and a half years old. Diane, I says, you need to let Lance go. This is his shot. We said, well, we'll go down and he'll see, you know, what it's about, and then we'll go home and forget it. They flew him into Orlando. I was a little nervous for him. Come on now! The minute that they hit the first harmony note together, all of us had the hair stand up on our neck. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> well, by that night, you know, they were already talking about contracts, so I knew. <laughs> I knew he was in. He was a real sweet kid, good teenager, never had given us any trouble. And, you know, you just feel like you have to give him that opportunity. It just doesn't come around every day. It's gonna be me. Lou had purchased a house for all the guys to live in. They had a little commune 
where all the guys lived. Rise and shine! <laughs> and played together and worked together. They had toys, basketball goals, and skateboard ramps. He actually gave them an allowance. It was kind of like Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. Four of them would be playing video games, and I would be, and they were teaching one of them their part, and I'd say, okay, you're done, go get Joey. And then Joey would come in, and Lance would take over his joystick at the video game. Everything was really, really compressed at a high velocity, and they were rehearsing 18 hours a day. There was a schedule posted on the wall of when the rehearsals were going to be. There was a method to the madness. It was all done together. What they were doing, staying in that house, was building not just a musical group, but a family. Lou, he came in with the plan. We had to get something on tape that showed they could sing, and, and he wanted to have some video of them dancing, performing in front of kids. And they busted their asses trying to get ready for the demo tape. It was as grueling as uh, maybe a war. The M.I. was all financed and paid for by Lou Pearl. Justin and J.C. had a fallen from being on the Mickey Mouse Club. Disney had given us J.C. and Justin's fan mail. And we took all the addresses off, typed them into a database, and made up a flyer and sent it out and said, this is a new group that they're in. They're doing a show in Orlando. Come and see them. And see! Let's do it! They did a showcase at Pleasure Island. There were a few hundred girls there, and they're screaming. We were just amazed. It was just so odd. They packed the club, you know, and if you from the demo tape, it looks like they're actually got something going on. And I mean, and nobody knew who they were. Nobody knew the instinct who. Justin and JC were totally comfortable with cameramen being up in your grill while you're trying to dance. Joey didn't seem to bother him. Chris absolutely looked like he was going to hurl at any moment during the whole show. We were trying to find a way to give Lance a solo. Girl, I can't believe you're really going. So uh, we put in this little sort of speaking thing. I want to open up my eyes and find you. He got so much grief about it from the other guys, too. It was one of those, you know, it was pretty funny. Uh -oh. I was given a project to shop to the major labels in New York. They went out and bought these like silver bubble vests and these, you know, sort of sunglasses that make you look like an insect. And they were so cool. We were going to New York and they were so cool. We got rejected by everybody. Most of the major labels only felt there was room for one boy band in the music business. NSYNC didn't stand a chance. Coming up. NSYNC finds fame overseas, but not without a price. I just threw a mother fit, called the record company and said, if these boys don't get a day off every week from now, I'm taking my child and going home. And lands their first U.S. gig. We put together a little show in the parking lot of a Walmart. And the boys stayed for four hours afterwards and signed every autograph for every person who was there. And later, Disney makes an offer they can't refuse. And it's like, okay, we have a show to do. We've got three weeks to do it. I remember talking to the guys and they were like, man, we're so nervous, we're so nervous. 